Hello guys, welcome back. This is Devin Adams and we are at our last device that we're going to import in for our advanced NSC4 test lab that we are developing as a continuation of our last set of videos. Uh, anyways, uh, so up to this point we've done the server, right, right there. We've done the Windows hosts. We also have a, a whole bunch of FortiGates, Forta managers, Forta analyzers. Isn't that such a good feeling, having all these devices piling up? Uh, but there is one more, and I promised I wouldn't record any more tonight. It is now officially beyond 1 o'clock in the morning, but that's okay. I'm committed. Anyways, <laughs> I want to finish this up. And that is that is the PF Sense. Now, now normally in our <clears throat> classroom environment, we were using a Linux box, uh, CentOS specifically, to act kind of like our, our WAN connection, right? Uh, that way we could connect point-to-point um, -point connections uh, between each other, and the whole idea of it was to act as a to act as like a, an autonomous system, right? Like an ISP's cloud or something like that. So, <clears throat> and I was thinking to myself, it'd be so neat if we could try something different. So, PF Sense is as an open source firewall, open source router. It has a wonderful interface. A lot of supported modulars can go into it. Um, so I'm going to try to bring it in and I am still not sure if that's what I'm going to use. Okay. On my devices, by the way, I just realized that I misspelled that. <laughs> Sorry. PFS and yes, it's like some like super Nintendo emulator. No, that should say, PF sense. Wow. All right. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and do this. So uh, if you find the PF sense template, um, let's go ahead and drag it on. Hit next. Okay. And I actually got concerned. I know that sounds kind of silly, but you'll see here in just a moment. Um, there is only a supported device up to PFSense 235. All right, so why am I concerned? They're far beyond that. They're like at two, four, and something. So I was wondering to myself, why is it not um, updated, right? Because it, it should be. And I realized that they are using their nano bsd image to do this and it's like the embedded image that you get off of their website and they stopped supporting it after 253 so if we want the latest and greatest for pf sense we're gonna have to actually get the iso do a blank hard drive and then flash it over <clears throat> and install it the long way and then essentially create a template on our own um, I am not going to go that far because PF Sense is not the focus of uh, the whole goal here. It's to get us a, a more advanced uh, lab. And I can't even remember what's supported in 235 compared to 24 and some change. So I'm just going to use that base image. Now, when you go to download this thing, uh, it can be kind of confusing. So just take note here 2G AMD64 Nano BSD. All right, so when you go to the download folder or website, all right, this is what it looks like, okay? And like I was mentioning, I mean, they're up there with the version. So I don't know why they stopped supporting it, but I did verify that when I did a quick search. So I'm just going to roll with it, though. Two, three, five, file type, install architecture AMD 64 installer embedded so nano BSD console is going to be serial not VGA and the media size is going to be 2 gig not 4 all right so once again 2 3 5 install AMD embedded serial 2 gig and then pick the closest to wherever you are Hit download, and then you're off to the races. All right, now I already downloaded it, and it does scan my download folder for images, so that's why I found it. But once you download, and you hit import, and you bring it in, next step, all right, 
is to upload it. Yeah, all two gigs of it. So guess who's going to hit the pause button? So I will see you guys when this finishes uploading. Now, for those that are impatient uh, or, or want to speed this along, check out my video of using FileZilla to get these into the VM. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to hit pause. I'll be right back. All right, there we go. That wasn't too bad. And once I hit OK, I now have this PFSense 235. Once again, I'm kind of on the fence of, you know, if I am going to, um, yeah, do a video on how to make the updated version. But this might just do us okay. So, but before I power this on to test it, I'm going to go to configure. All right. I'm going to go to network and just make sure that it has more than two adapters, which it does. In fact, six is about how many we want because because one's going to plug into the real internet right one's going to plug into the real internet through a NAT interface and then we're going to have four connections coming out two each for each FortiGate to simulate dual ISP links just like we did in class so all right so that looks good let me just go ahead and hit the, the play button here and power it on to make sure it boots all right, and there, there it goes. <clears throat> Very cool. So that's all I wanted to see. Uh, why? Because, well, this is just importing it in. So in the next videos, we're actually going to start building our topologies, which will be awesome now that we have all of our parts. And once again, what have we done so far? We imported these Windows machines, these FortiGates, and now this PF sense box, which is going to act as our, as our pseudo WAN connection. So, all right, guys. <clears throat> well, that's all that I have for tonight. And uh, uh, in the next couple of days, I don't know when I'm going to get to it. We're going to continue on. I'll try not to be too, too, um, too, too late about it. So, but uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed it so far, and I'm really excited to do some really neat things here to get you guys a lab that's that's workable, that you can start playing around with some of those more advanced features. So, all right. Thanks for watching, and until next time.